The gentlelady from uh, Missouri, Ms. Wagner, who is the chair of the Capital Markets Subcommittee. I uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, and I thank all of our witnesses for being here. General Ellison, it's good to see you again. I appreciate the work that we've done together on uh, finding this, fighting the scourge of human trafficking and especially online sex trafficking. So Absolutely. I appreciate your continued uh, efforts on that. Mr. Copeland, uh, under SEC Chair Gensler's leadership, uh, the number of environmental and social shareholder proposals has increased dramatically. Uh, the shareholder proposal process, which has played a key role in meaningful corporate governance for decades, is being eroded by a minority influence over America's public companies at the expense of everyday average investors. If the reforms proposed today are not enacted, what will be the long-term consequences for retail investors? I, they're gonna get a weaker return. So, right, I mean, there's two big problems here, as I see it. One, uh, you're gonna hurt the returns for the average investor. Mm -hmm. uh, it makes it more difficult for companies to, to run their business when you convert them into political platforms. The SEC long understood this. I mean, I argue my written testimony, the, the, the 14 a serial proposal process is legally dubious to begin with based on what Congress has authorized the commission to do and based on the, the presumptive uh, state law, which is not a race to the bottom as, as, as Representative Sherman said, it's a race to the top. As yes. Chief Judge Winter argued in his seminal 1977 argue, uh, article, I, I clerked for him and, and it's the most important corporate law article of the last 50 years. But, mm. um, you know, I argue that there's a problem with it anyway, but, but, but at least if you're taking these social things off the table and we're talking about whether we elect all our directors annually or how we elect our directors, you're talking about real governance issues that involve the corporation and not these environmental and social concerns. So, I, yeah, that's the that's real cost. The other cost is, is the cost of democracy itself, right? And that's why I wanted to emphasize that you've got two small proxy advisory firms privately owned. Right. And, and, and asset managers that are principally passive index investing vehicles, not making affirmative buy sell decisions, telling corporate America how to do their jobs. And that's an end run around the representative process. And everyone in Congress will be really concerned about that in both parties. And, and, and to, to your initial point, too, sir, there are millions of Americans who invest their hard-earned dollars uh, with the simple goal of achieving the highest return on their investment. Mr. Cunningham, uh, based on your decades of experience, sir, in what ways can the shareholder process, proposal process be restored to better protect the economic inter interests of, of what I care about most, retail investors? Well, thank you for the opportunity to, to make some suggestions. I think many of the bills that you're considering would, would do so. I think we we need to um, eliminate or filter out the special interest groups from hijacking the shareholder proposal process. And, and as Mr. Copeland just said, it's been a very useful mechanism through which to improve fundamental governance practices in the country for 30 or 40 years. And, and, and that is the, the real legitimate and genuine purpose um, to respect state law prerogatives in that space. So any rulemaking that you can do um, or that the SEC could do to return it to focus on the corporation's interest, the shareholder's interest, and to filter out the, the special interest infiltration would be very useful. And, and their fiduciary responsibilities. Um, Mr. Allen, how have proxy advisor errors, analytical flaws, and omissions been documented and reported by stakeholders, including the society and its members? I mean, it's certainly a major concern for our for our members. We did a, a member survey in 2019, and uh, it found that 42% of our um, members reported or uh, noticed errors in their proxy research, you know, about their companies within 42%? the past. 42%? 42%. And, you know, it was an astounding figure. We provided examples of those errors to the SEC in our comment letters in 2020 and 2021. So it's certainly something that, you know, errors, you know, are bound to occur given the number of, of companies that company, the proxy advisors are opining on. That's why we support a, a robust draft review process so companies have a reasonable opportunity to review draft reports before their investors start voting on when, them. When presented with these errors, how, how have the proxy advisors responded? 
Well, in some cases, they do make uh, corrections. In other cases, they will say, well, the, area, the error is not material, or they'll say it's a difference of opinion rather than a factual error. And um, even when they do make corrections, uh, some investors don't go back and change their vote uh, uh, decisions. 42% of proxy advisor errors, flaws, omissions, it's reprehensible. I thank you all for your testimony. So My time's expired, and I yield back, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you. Uh, 